Hey there, everyone. Welcome to Ask Me Monday. I am Vicki Howell. It's so good to be with you. I'm going to move this light. It's making weird, like, sounds and craziness. Uh, I cannot believe that it's only been a week since I've been here with you. It was so strange because here in the holidays, it was a holiday. Here in the holidays. Here in the States, it was a holiday on Wednesday. And so it feels like there's been two weekends, but yet I worked through both of the weekends. So my point is, is I have loads to talk to you about. Um, I'm going to do my tutorial first. And I'll talk about that in a second and then save all of the what did you make um, show and tell kind of stuff for the end. So the people that are just here to learn can do that and then we can chat later. This episode is brought to you by Knitter's Pride in the in the States and North America and Knit Pro elsewhere. They are a wonderful company based in India, very supportive of women and um, creators, makers like myself. So please, if you have not already, check out knitterspride.com or Knitters Pro. All right, hello, hello. Please make sure that you tell me where you're watching from. As always, this is your community. These boards are a great place to reach out and see who might be in your hood or maybe make a friend for the next time you're on the road and want to uh, want to meet up in in real life. Okay, today what we're going to be doing is we are going to be crocheting buttons. So um, lovely to see you all. Hi Deborah. Hi Eugenia. Hi Chris. Uh, hola Eugenia in Argentina. So nice to have you there. Uh, Zena in Toronto. Patty from Pennsylvania. So wonderful to start the week with you all. So we're going to be working on crocheted buttons, and even if you're not a big crocheter, Deborah, I'm talking to you, this is a great project because it, it requires only a couple of rounds, and it's great for, um, I don't know about you, but I live in Texas, it's about 100 degrees, well it's raining today so you might hear thunder, but it's still hot, and sometimes really big projects are just, you know, for a lack of better word, icky um, <laughs> to have laying on your lap when it's really hot. So what's really great is if you can make something little like this, little bobble button and you can make them in all different sizes but using the same exact pattern and that pattern is in the status um, update already and also you can just go to vickihell.com they are so fun to make and they're adorable and they're great stash busters so if you wanted to grab a bunch like a you know a ziploc baggie of a bunch of your you know i don't know about you but i have so many just scraps and little bits left over from projects that i don't want to get rid of but I would really love to use, throw it in a bag and take it with you on your next road trip. Um, it's a great mobile project. So we're going to be working on bobble buttons again. Same pattern for the wee baby ones all the way to the grande ones. And we're also going to be working on circle buttons. So these are flat buttons if you don't want to bobble. You can kind of see. And if you want, you can layer both together. I haven't sewed it on. But you can marry them in button you love and make a little dimensional button as well. So I'm going to dive right in um, and turn around. And then, like I said, later, I would love to know what you worked on in, in the States on the 4th of July holiday, everywhere over this past weekend. Doesn't matter if it's knitting or crochet or sewing or cooking, whatever it is. And I'm telling you ahead of time so that you have time to grab those links if you, got pra if you have pattern or a tutorial or a video that you wanted to share for whatever you made so that other people can also maybe um, create that way too. Okay, I'm gonna flip the camera around and then we will go from there. All right. So, the first that we're going to make are these baubles. And as I said in the beginning, you can make them in any size that you want with almost the exact same pattern, and I'll, I'll talk to you about the almost in a second, and that pattern is at vickihell.com. Really all that you change is the size of your hook, and these are the Knitter's Pride Waves crochet hooks that I'm using, and the weight of your yarn. So you could use a big yarn like this one. This is, I believe, Malabrigo Rasta, or you could use a really fine yarn like this. I believe this is Zauerball Cotton. <clears throat> or somewhere in between, something with texture like this um, Be So Tender from Kristen Omdahl, an Aran Weight, this is from Koi Goo, really whatever you have, or, you know, this is just from the craft store. Whatever you have around will work. So I'm going to just pick a yarn. 
arbitrarily and get started. I recommend using a hook size that is either the millimeters that are shown on the label or one size down because these for this particular button you will be stuffing it and so you want there to be minimal amount of holes. So we're going to start by making a slip knot, but we want to leave quite a tail. Let me back this up. A significant tail because this is what we'll be stuffing the actual button with. Okay, so I'm making a slip knot. Get these out of the way so you have a nice clean area to watch the demo. Slip it on. Whoops. Okay. From here, and again, it doesn't matter what yarn weight you're using, just as long as you have the corresponding hook, you're going to chain two. Okay, then from here, we're going to do six single crochets if you are in North America, double crochets if you're in the UK, right in that second chain from hook. So not the first chain, but the second. One. Two. And you can go right over the tail if you want three, four, five, six. Okay, so now we've got this really nice little ring, pulling the tail if it got a little bit bigger, of single crochets, or double if you're in the UK, and you wanna join that round with a slip stitch in that first chain. So you should have six stitches here. You can also, if you want, you can use the magic circle loop, which I'll be going over in a second. I'm sorry, the magic circle method. And then you would just do six single crochets within that magic loop, you would skip the chain two. Okay, from here, we are going to chain one. That doesn't count as a stitch. It's really just not high enough. And then we're going to single crochet one time in each of the chains, or excuse me, each of the single crochets all the way around. Now you can see I've only done a couple and it's already starting to curve. If we wanted a flat circle, which I'll be showing you later, we would need to increase, we'd need to double the stitches. So magic circle is an option. I chose to go with the chain method for this. You do you. Okay, and then you wanna count one, two, three, four, five, five. I need a sixth one. And you wanna make sure that you're going, well, I'm going through under both loops. You could do under one loop if you wanted to have ridges, that could be a design feature. Okay, so then, and this one is not as tight as I'd like it. Then we're going to join the round again with, whoops, with a slip stitch. Okay, so already here you can see I've got a wee baby cup, right? Now from here, you need to do the exact same thing one more time making sure that you are not doing what I just did and grabbing the tail instead of your working yarn. Okay, so we're gonna go around in all of them. And if you're hearing that weird sizzling sound, that's my lights. I think, I think my lights are about to, to meet their demise. It may be time. Okay, so I'm going all the way around. Again, just one single crochet. And 
in each stitch and you can see it's really forming a full cup now and if you lose your place sometimes with single crochet it can be easy to lose your place because the height is so um, shallow you just count one two three four this was my beginning chain so I need to do two more I'm going to join okay now if you're working with a yarn this is an Aran if you're working with a Aran or a chunky yarn maybe a worsted it, it sort of depends on your gauge not that gauge matters but it'll change it'll affect the size you can stop here at this point because you've got enough enough of a depth for it to look like a solid button if you're working with a finer weight like the Zara ball I was showing you earlier you might want to repeat that last row one or two more times so that you can get more of that depth that you're getting with the chunkier yarn. That's just something you'll need to experiment with and go from there. Okay, at this point, if you want, you can set your hook aside. You're going to take your tail and stuff it in. And remember, if you're watching live and there's any sort of skipping spots or pauses, it often it often just has to do with the actual um, connection. So if you watch the recorded version, it usually writes itself. Okay, so I'm going to stuff this. I probably have too much tail here, so I can just get rid of some of it. Okay. So then we are going to cut our yarn on the opposite end. And this is where we grab a tapestry needle. And this is also a Knitter's Pride. Actually, they refer to them, these are called wool needles. So you're going to string that tail through and pull it. Okay, so now you have this little sort of bowl of yarn, right? And you're going to Take your needle and just weave inside and out along the top edge. And it does not need to be perfect. Essentially, you're just creating what will cinch the piece together. Thank you, Linda, for the compliment on my scissors. They were actually one of the products from July's, or excuse me, June's Yarnier subscription box. Um, and I've been using the heck out of them. Okay, so we've gone all the way around. All we have to do is pull. Again, I way overstuffed this one. And it's already shut. So from here, I tried doing putting a loop on the back, but honestly, I just felt like it wouldn't lay flat on a garment if you're going to use these. So I would just say, go ahead and do, it like, does not have to be pretty, you just want something to be able to use to sew on later. And really, as long as there's a knot, your, your needle and thread or whatever you're using to attach it to a garment will grab onto it. And then you just cut and go. These would be really, really cute as earrings as well. So that's all there is to it. You can see this one is on the bigger scale you just need a place for your yarn and needle or tapestry needle to, uh, to sew onto a piece. These would be really cute. They're really cute actually, just in a bowl. So earrings, like I said a second ago, um, also just decorative. Okay, so that is the bobble buttons. Next, let's talk circles. So this is, a, this is fun. These would be really cute, made, turned into you know, a brooch or a pin, like I said, you can layer the different types or the same types in different sizes. So let's get started on this one. So let's do this fun yarn. I believe this is by Spun Right Round, this yarn. And I could probably, I don't have a J hook in front of me. I think this I hook will still work. Yeah, I think I'll still go with this this hook. 
Okay, and again, the pattern for these, both of these buttons are on vickihowell.com, also in the status update right here. Okay, so for this one, again, you could do, use the same method as before where you chain two and then um, work your double crochets in the center, and I'll show you how we're in the second chain, or you can do the magic circle. How, there's a lot of different ways to do it. This is how I'm doing it. I'm laying my tail across my first two fingers and wrapping around. Then I'm going to take my hook, reach under the first strand, grab the second, and now I have my stitch, and there's my loop. Okay, from here, I pull through and chain one, two, three. Okay, I'm now going to do double crochets. If you're in the US, there are trebles if you are not. And you'll do 11 of those in this circle. So yarning over, inserting hook, yarn over again, pull through two loops once, pull through two loops twice. So unlike with the other version where our chain did not count as a stitch, because the double crochet height is more, also the chains are higher, and so it can count. So we need a total of 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six, halfway there. And again, I apologize for the sounds that were coming from my light. I think, I think I'm going to have to bid that light bulb a farewell. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so that should be eleven double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nope, eleven. And then the twelfth stitch is that chain three. Okay. Then we're going to take our tail and we're going to pull, and that's why you do the magic circle, my friends. You pull it, cinches it together. You're going to join the round by slipping a stitch in the top so the, of the first beginning chain three. Now, this is where you could get crazy. You could, at this point, join another color, like I did here, and this is where you would join it when you slip it, or you can keep going with the same color. Okay, so if you're going with the same color, you're going to go ahead and slip that stitch. And then from here, just as an edging, and you don't have to do this, this would be fine. I recommend doing this if you're using a finer weight um, yarn, just because it'll give it a little more body. For a yarn that's chunky like this one, it's not necessary, but I'm gonna show you anyway. So from here, you want to slip stitch twice so you need to increase so it won't curve up like our last like our bobbles do you need to slip stitch twice in every stitch so you're going to go from 12 to 24 stitches to keep your flat your piece flat you could also do single crochets here i didn't want any more height so that's why i chose to do slip stitches here and even though um, I, I did write out the pattern on vickihowell.com, please always just use these patterns as a suggestion, a jumping off point for whatever you want to do. I think this would be really cute to add, especially with the finer weights, a pico edging around. You could play with beading. I think I lost track. Let me back it up. You want to make sure that you're doing, like I said, two in every round. Uh, Beth is asking what brand of yarn this is. This is a, a small spinner. Her name is Spin Right Round. You can find her on Instagram, and I just love her stuff. I discovered her at my local yarn store, Hill Country Weavers. And I'm using, I think it's this color. This, uh, mm, Yeah, I think it's this exact color. Actually, I'm not sure about that. 
I used this color for a swatch on the Knit Show Instagram feed, and then I'm using one of our other colors for a hat in the upcoming The Knit Show book. Okay, so I've gone all the way around. You get the gist. You'd end it with a slip stitch. And then from here, whoops, from here you have a couple choices. So you can make a, another smaller version and sew it on. You could make a bobble version, sew it on. You could leave it like this and call it a day and just weave in these ends. That way it would lay really flat on your garment. If you don't care about it laying really flat, maybe you decide you want to put a little handle on it to help with sewing. I don't actually love that for this project, but you do you. I'm going to show you how to do it just in case you want to do it that way. I feel like it causes bulk, especially with this bigger yarn that's unnecessary. So you want to just take your working yarn and just kind of slip stitch on the back side towards the general center. And then when you get to the center, you can do a few chains. Depending on the weight of the yarn, the amount will be different. I'm just going to say four for now. So you do four chains. And then you insert your hook underneath just sort of part of the post of the back of one of the stitches. Bring your yarn around. Pull it through. You'd of course then weave in the ends and then you've got this little area. Now this would be really cute if you wanted to slide it onto a strap for a purse or onto, I don't know, belt. Belt flare? Is belt flare a thing? It is now. Um, but that's just another option in case you want to. Again, if I were going to be making this, especially in a bulky yarn like this, for a sweater, like a ginormous sweater, I would skip that and I would just sew it on right there to create stability. But um, you know, if you want a shank, there's a shank. So there you go. And that really is all there is to it. Really easy. So cute. I get, these are just so fun. My mom's visiting right now and she and I were making these last night. And even if I, did, I never use them as buttons, they're so fun just to make. I think it would be really cute also to string them together to make things. I don't know, jewelry or who knows? They're just fun. It's hard not to uh, have a smile on your face with something like this. Okay, so I'm going to flip the camera in, around now, and this is where I would love show and tell to happen, or show and talk as it were. I'm going to talk to you about some of the things that I made over the holiday and also the weekend. And um, if you have any projects that you're really into right now that you could share or cool creative classes that you're taking right now or anything that you can share please link um post your links in the comment section either now while we're live or later um if you are watching this later on youtube please make sure that you click subscribe underneath so that you get notifications and if you're watching on facebook also make sure that you've liked my Facebook page at Vicki Howell and also click the little bell so that you are notified when this is live in the future. If you would share this video with anybody that you think might be interested or whom you think might be interested, I'd really appreciate it. It helps a lot um, to spread the word when you do that. So, okay, let's talk about uh, our downtime and creativity. All right, so um, the scarf that I'm wearing, I made quite some time ago. This is one of the projects. I, there's a crochet version, which I might as well grab because I'm here. This last box had knit and crochet versions of the same type of project so that everybody could play along. Um, it's the Cashmere Bandit Scarf. This is a cashmere blend from Dream and Color. It's called Liberation. I just love it. Um, so this was our project for June. Our, I'm going to announce the project for July's Yarnier box imminently today or tomorrow just waiting to see this month we will also be offering knitting and crochet projects that are exactly the same i'm experimenting with that i don't know i don't you know i don't know if it'll ultimately be worth it to keep going that way but i just think it's really cool to make it inclusive for everyone okay then i was working on fourth of july so here's a nerdy fact probably nobody cares about it. i'm gonna tell you anyway i love working with the colors of a holiday on the actual holiday i know but for 4th for of July, 
<coughs> excuse me. I played a little bit more with the technique that I showed on the last episode of, of Ask Me Monday, and you can find that um, either on YouTube or on Facebook under the Ask Me Monday playlist. So I played around with Navajo knitting and also trying to stripe with it. So that I worked on this. <coughs> Excuse me, I need to get a little sip of water. Please post what you're working on too. Then, what else did I make? Oh, I'm super excited about this. I've wanted to do this, work on this forever. I was in dire need for a little me time knitting. Um, you know the feel, like when you just you just need a little like breathe in knit out time. I totally needed that and I took a few minutes over the weekend to cast on for my summer sweetness sweater that is designed by my buddy Amy Small with using her knit collage yarns and I'm just, I cannot wait to make it. It's a little crop, crop short sleeve shirt and wear it on a future Ask Me Monday. If you're interested in seeing its progress coming along or any of the projects that I'm working on or snippets of video, please follow me on Instagram. I'm really working on that a little bit more. Um, it's just at Vicki Howell. They have IGTV now where I also do little tiny snippet shorter videos um, and try to make it real pretty. So if you could follow at Vicki Howell on Instagram, that would be great. Um, I also, right before the holiday, in case you missed this, I made a little cell phone cozy. I got a new phone, which is why you may notice that the aspect ratio is a little bit different on these videos. I think I need a different tripod now too. It's just a different frame. Um, but I want to, you know, you know that thing when you first get a phone and you're like babying it, you get a case, but then also like the screen you want it to be protected. And then, you know, two weeks later, it's at the bottom, you know, in the depths of despair that is um, your purse. Anyways, so I teamed up with this company called Visible and these are their little emoji logos and I just think it's really cute and um, it was fun to have this little sewing project too. So on Instagram also I have instructions for how to make a little cell phone cozy like this. All right, then yesterday um, I spent a lot of time, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of time over the past week and a half working on a deadline for the Knit Show book. And I'm really, really excited about it, and I can't wait for, to be able to tell you more. It doesn't come out for a year, but just know, just know I'm excited. Uh, but part of that was that I needed to go over to Hill Country Weavers, my local yarn store, and pick up a scarf that the owner had designed out of their private label yarn to be in the book. And when you're at a yarn store, you gotta buy yarn, right? So I picked up a couple things. Um, a couple, oh gosh, I don't know, maybe it was three episodes ago on Ask Me Monday, I showed how to make crocheted beaded uh, bracelets. And I wanna revisit that. I got, I picked up this, it's by Lang Yarns, it's called Canapa. And it is, um, it's 100% hemp. And I thought it would be really great for bracelets with beads. So I'm gonna experiment with that. And you can find that tutorial at vickihowell.com or watch the videos through um, the Ask Me Monday playlist. Then, and I don't know when or how this is ever gonna happen, but I am a sucker for A, ochre, that mustard color, B, leopard print. I picked up this kit, which is a partnership. It's gonna be backwards, because the, sorry, the forward-facing camera. I picked up this um, collaboration between Wool and the Gang and Regia, and um, it is self-patterning, can you see? They're socks that are leopard, but mustard and, and like indigo blue. How fun is that? Again, will I ever have time to make it? <laughs> but I can buy it and put it on a shelf and smile at it real nice, and so I'm gonna do that. And then the last thing I bought, so my friend, Rachel Denbow, she was a guest on The Knit Show. She was on the uh, Multicraftual episode, um, which I believe was episode 108, and you should, if you have not watched it, it's a great episode. It also has Brett Barra from, um, she used to be the host of Knit and Crochet Now, and she owns Brooklyn Craft Company. Just It's just one of my favorite episodes, and you can find that at thenitshow.com or on YouTube on the Knit Show channel. Anyway, she has this brilliant class on all natural dyeing. It's an online class, and I have been, you know, saving my rose petals from Mother's Day and getting people to save avocado skins. I can't eat it. They make me sick, but avocado skins and pits so that I can try this natural dyeing course with her, but I needed yarn for it. So I went and got some, um, this is organic cotton from Blue Sky Fibers. Um, so I'm hoping within the next week or so to be able to give that a little yarn dyeing um, a try. I'm super excited about it. So that was my main, that was, you know, book writing, 
experimenting with striping and Navajo knitting, a little bit of summer sweater sweetness, prepping for this, Ask Me Monday, um, prepping for the next Yarnier project. That was pretty much, that's pretty much encapsulates my crafty life over the past week and a half. I love to see what you're doing though. So please post links. Again, if you make anything that I work on as well, or I've taught you, um, including these cute little buttons, please tag me wherever you post about them. It makes my whole heart smile when I see, pe see people out there um, being creative, um, especially if I might have had a little teeny, 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 tiny something to do with it. It makes me happy. Okay, that is it for today's Ask Me Monday. Um, if you do not already, please follow my newsletter. You can just join at VickiHowell.com. I try to curate a bunch of this stuff so it's just in your inbox. I am off for the next two weeks. Um, I have, uh, we have company. My, uh, my best friend and her family are coming in next week. And the week after that, I speak at a conference um, unrelated to unrelated to crafting. So I will be back in your feed on July 30th. This is your opportunity. That gives me two weeks to come up with something to show you for the next episode of Ask Me Monday. So please share this video with your, with your friends and ask them and also note it down yourself. What would you like me to um, cover for the next episode? It can be knitting, it could be crocheting, it could be sewing, it could be doesn't really matter. Whatever you want, I'm here. I aim to please. All right, it's been a pleasure. Don't forget to follow, subscribe, click on the notification bell, all of the things. And if you want to be on the waiting list, we open up sales for Yarnier.com within the next few days. Please make sure you go there and put your name on. Um, I won't know how many spots are open until I can see how many people are not resubscribing from the last month. The month before, it, there weren't a lot of spots, so get on that list. Okay. Been a pleasure. Thank you so much for starting your week with me. Didn't mean to babble on for 30 minutes. I try to keep these shorter. It is what it is. Such a pleasure. Take, please, just a few moments every day if you can to feed that creative well. All right, breathe in, craft out. Mwah. Bye.